Hello, everybody who is here in person. We're probably visible. Hello, way back there. We're probably visible on live stream, so it's always kind of weird that I'm talking.
Good morning, and welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading others to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in His image. I'm Pastor Wynn. I'll be assisting Pastor Sherry in the service here at Bethany, and we are delighted that you are here with us in person or virtually, wherever it is you are. I encourage all of you to register your presence with us today. Go to that check-in link and sign in to let us know you're here and help us to keep track of you. We also want you to keep track of us, so check out our Stay Connected connected link for all of the uh, information about ministries and uh, the latest news that you need to know from Bethany. We encourage you to give your tithes and offerings as the Spirit leads you through our giving link. And of course, share with us how we can be in prayer for you in the coming days by going to our prayer page on the website. I want to let you know that we are watching all of the changes that are happening, the COVID metrics in the Austin area, and making decisions related to campus events and any adjustments. So please keep an eye out on emails from Bethany Church and also visit our website for updates and changes so that you can know what the latest is. I do have several announcements to make. First of all, happy Thanksgiving. I pray whatever that is for you, you have a mind for the blessings and offer God your gratitude for those. Tonight, we are holding our Friendsgiving. So I know many of you ordered meals by Thursday. If you did not order food, you can still bring your own. You can sit in your car if you want, but we encourage you to bring your chairs. We have plenty of space to spread out and enjoy our Friendsgiving meal together. That's at 5 o'clock this evening. And we'll also show uh, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Our outdoor worship service tonight will be at 6.30, so we encourage you to stay for that. Masks and social distancing are required even while we are outside. On Tuesday, we will have our ecumenical Thanksgiving service that will be virtual in its entirety. It's at 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night, and Unity Church of the Hills will be hosting that service. Next Sunday, Hanging of the Greens, if you can believe, yeah, I'm getting some wows here. Hanging of the Greens is next Sunday already. That will be at 6 p.m. We will live stream that service. It will also be in person. There are some modifications that we have made because of COVID, but it will be the joyful, wonderful time it is as we ring in the holy season. We also want to encourage you to go to YouTube and check out our channel. Bethany United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas has a YouTube channel. You can watch our services there as well. For those of you who are struggling with Facebook or if you know others who are, let them know we are now on YouTube and that's a wonderful way to connect with our services of worship here at Bethany. I invite you now to begin our worship by taking a deep breath in, allowing your mind to be as present as your body is in the space where you are worshiping as we begin our worship with our prelude.
I invite you to rise in body or spirit for our call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless his name. And remain standing and sing our hymn of praise. Come, ye thankful people, come. and give thanks to God, we can especially thank God for the ways that he pours out forgiveness in our lives abundantly. I invite you to consider as we pray our prayer of confession together today, what it is you need to bring to confess, to repent, and to receive God's forgiveness and be blessed. Let us pray. Lord, we confess that we are prone to wander away from you. We wander away from compassion when it might inconvenience us. We wander away from peace and reconciliation when the work is too hard and the personal cost seems too high. We wander away from gratitude when we think you have failed to provide for us. We wander away from loving others when we forget how deeply you love us first. Forgive us from wandering away from you. Here are our hearts. Take them and heal them. Renew them and redirect them to following where you lead. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear this good news, my brothers and sisters. Christ died for us 
while we were yet sinners, proving God's love for us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. I want to uh, catch up with those who came in a little bit late just to welcome you to Bethany United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Wynn, and I want to make sure that you're connecting with us in a number of ways. Make sure that you register your presence with us by going to that check-in link and signing in what service you attended. You can also go to our giving link to share your tithes and your offerings the prayer page for sharing how we can be lifting you up on behalf of God. And do make sure to visit our Stay Connected page. We are watching all the COVID metrics in the Austin area and making decisions related to campus events and any adjustments. So watch our Stay Connected page, check our website, and look out for any Bethany emails that are coming your way. I have several announcements I want to share with you because it is Thanksgiving week and Advent season is fast upon us. Tonight, we are having our Friendsgiving meal at 5 o'clock. If you did not order food, you can bring your own and join us in your vehicle or bring your chairs. We have a lot of space that we can spread out. Masks and social distancing are required while we're outside. Join us for Friendsgiving and the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving movie that will be playing during that time. And we invite you to stay till our 6.30 worship service. Uh, join us for outdoor worship tonight at 6.30. On Tuesday, we are having our annual ecumenical Thanksgiving service that will be virtually only and hosted by Unity Church of the Hills. So this Tuesday at 730 will be our Thanksgiving service. And next Sunday, Hanging of the Greens. We've modified it a little bit for COVID measures. We are having in-person worship opportunities and we will be live streaming it as well. That is next Sunday, 6 o'clock for Hanging of the Greens. And we encourage you to check out the YouTube channel for Bethany United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas. Make sure you subscribe to that channel. You can find all of our worship services that we live stream there anytime after we have posted them. So enjoy catching up with us through our YouTube channel at Bethany Now. I want to make sure that uh, we give a shout out to all of our brothers and sisters at Bethany. Today we want to celebrate the Bethany congregation. You have been patient and flexible and faithful and generous through some really trying times. Your presence in worship, in small groups and classes have been uh, both virtual and in person as you're able. They've been encouraging and a way for many others to connect. And so we thank you for that. Your prayers for one another is such a great way to support each other when we cannot support each other in person. As the uncertainty of the pandemic continues, we are so blessed and so grateful to be together as part of the body of Christ here at Bethany. So we thank you, Bethany family. And now let us offer our gifts to God. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude, all that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing. Lord, to Thee, 
And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. And now let us pray. Holy God, as we pray, we pray that what we bring gives you the glory for the abundance of blessings in our lives. Help us, Lord, with all that we say and all that we do to pay tribute to you and the abundance of gifts you have poured into us in our minds, in our bodies, in our relationships, in all the ways you equip us to offer the Christ Lord, you have blessed us, even in this time of pandemic, even in conflict swirling all around us in so many ways, even in our personal struggles that do not stop because of the hardships of the world around us. God, you know how overwhelmed we feel. You know how we resist connecting. Help us to not approach our lives from places of fear, but instead in places of thanksgiving for the incredible ways You are giving us new life every morning. Be with us, Lord, that we have a wisdom beyond our own understanding. Guide us along your path that is not our will, but your way for us. And Lord, help us to have the eyes to see all of those who are in need of what you have given us to offer. Give us the ears to hear the cries of your people to whom you would send us to be bearers of Christ's light and love in this holy season, and all our days that we have his love to offer. We give you thanks, God, for this wonderful privilege of sharing Christ as brothers and sisters and as your sons and daughters, united by the one who came to give us life eternal with you. And as we give you thanks, God, hear that rung out through our voices, joined together as we share the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you all to rise in body and spirit as you sing our hymn of the word we gather together.
be seated. Good morning. My name is Sherry Clifton. I'm one of the pastors here. If you're just now joining us, I want to welcome you to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to experience God's love, to know Jesus Christ, and to grow in his image. It is good to be in worship with you in person and online as we remember God's goodness today and celebrate God's faithfulness. A reminder to you who are worshiping with us online that you can go to our church's website for all the updated information about how to stay connected and what you need to know about what's happening here on campus. As we continue in worship this morning, I don't know about you, but for me it feels like this is about the 38th month of 2020. And uh, we're heading into Thanksgiving week. I'm, I'm not real sure how we got to Thanksgiving week, but, but here we are. And I love Thanksgiving, and I love giving thanks. Uh, I could talk about gratitude for hours, and you'll be thankful today that I'm not going to talk about it for hours today. But if you want to talk about gratitude, you call me because I, uh, gratitude has changed my life. Giving thanks has changed my life, and, and it really becomes essential to who we are as people of faith. There are a few things that I'm especially thankful for this morning. Uh, I am most grateful uh, for right now elastic waistbands. Uh, some of you will be able to relate uh, with me to that. The other thing I'm thankful for this morning is for laughter, except when milk comes out my nose uh, when I'm laughing. I also learned this week that there are some turkeys who are grateful. Uh, they are thankful for the vegetarians in the crowd this week. You know, laughter is good. It is healing. It is necessary. Uh, and I'm keenly aware that as we head into this week of Thanksgiving that we have a full plate of emotions. Joy, yes. Laughter, yes. Gratitude and relief and peace. There are still good things happening in, in our world and in our lives, things for us to celebrate, and we should. It is good and right that we should celebrate the good things that are happening all around us. And I know that many of us come into this week also on that plate of emotions are heartache and disappointment and frustration and anger and loneliness and uncertainty and worry and fear, and certainly for many of us, a, a fatigue, a, a weariness as we continue in this year. And, and for some of us, our emotions are, are on this plate of emotions. They're all kind of running together like your food on Thanksgiving does sometimes. When you don't even want it to, all of a sudden it's just all together. And it's hard for us sometimes to separate all the different things we're feeling, and yet they're part of our experience right now. So what do, we, what do we do with all of what we're feeling as we head into this week? Well, first this morning, I think just a, a collective sigh, <sighs> right? That, that breathing, that sighing, that accepting our reality right now. The second thing I think we do is we feel all the feelings, whatever those feelings are in your world, in your life, that you feel all of them. And you know I'm going to remind you then to land on the truth. The truth of who God is as our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, and the truth of who we are as God's beloved children. Because when we can land there, when we can feel all that we feel and still land on the truth of God's love for us, that gets us here. We give thanks to God, not because of how we feel, but because of who he is. Giving thanks doesn't mean pretending things are good when they aren't. It does mean remembering that God is good even when things aren't. So today I wonder where you are needing to remember that God is good and where you are being invited then to give thanks. Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful for this time together in worship today. And we pray that you would open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive your word to us, that it would take hold of us and renew us. And I pray, Lord, that my words and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of our first scriptures today comes from Paul's 
uh, first letter to the Thessalonians out of chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Uh, Sounds simple enough, right? Rejoice, pray, give thanks. So simple and yet not at all easy for most of us, especially in these days. I want you to notice that it does not say give thanks for all circumstances. What does it say? It says give thanks in all circumstances. Many years ago when I realized this, it changed gratitude for me. I'd I'd grown up really, I think, believing uh, that as a Christian, I was supposed to be grateful for everything, right? For the good and the bad, for, for all that was wrong. I was supposed to find a way to be grateful for those things. And I, honestly, there are just things in this world for which I am decidedly not grateful. And so when I realized that what Paul is saying is be grateful in all circumstances, not for all circumstances, there was a a freedom in me to actually give thanks. Sometimes in the middle of the worst things, to find a way to give thanks and be grateful. The things in this world, some of them that I am decidedly not grateful for, broken relationships and cancer and other diseases that rob us of life and of the fullness of life, Addictions and tragedies and hunger and homelessness and poverty and abuse and hatred and suffering and oppression. There are a lot of things in this world that we are decidedly not grateful for. Diana Butler Bass says, There are things we shouldn't be grateful for, but that we can be grateful through them, even while struggling in them. There are things we shouldn't be grateful for, but that we can be grateful through them, even while we are struggling in them. Gratitude tethers us to God instead of keeping us tied to our circumstances. God remains constant and true, steadfast in love and mercy and care, and our circumstances will always change. We know that all too well. The Apostle Paul certainly knew that too. He knew hardship and suffering and detours and disappointments, his ever-changing circumstances. And yet most of his letters to the early churches include not only his gratitude, expressing his gratitude, but instructions for them to be grateful, to give thanks. Back in October, I was... Uh, really about ready to completely give up on uh, social media altogether. I I was uh, really so disheartened by seeing what was divisiveness and contentiousness and discord and just an ugliness, and and in large part by people who say that they follow Jesus. And I just could hardly be on it, and yet it was one of the ways that I connect with people that are in my life from all around the world. And so just about the time that I was ready to sign off on all of it, uh, I would see a post that would remind me of joy and hope and encouragement, that would give me a glimpse of, of someone who was seeking forgiveness and reconciliation, would give me a glimpse of the beauty in our world when, when people live in a with a sense of of humility to try to really listen to and understand one another. And I thought, well, how is there a way that I could stay connected to social media? Is there a way that I could continue to experience this grace and these reminders that there are good things, there are beautiful things in us and in the world without having to be grumpy and frustrated with all that is not good on there? And I decided that, that for me... It had to begin with gratitude because I I wanted not only to to see the good, but I wanted to contribute to the good. And and so I issued, back in October, I issued a gratitude challenge. Um, I was not smart enough to create a hashtag for it, but someone who is smarter than I am did. And I'm really grateful that she did because if you go search that hashtag, The people who have participated and who have posted on Facebook or social media, you'll see 
what people have been grateful for. The challenge was that for 30 days, for the next month, every day you post three things that you're grateful for that day. So every day you were to keep track of being grateful and then post that or share that. And a remarkable thing happened as we participated in that. A remarkable sense of joy, a sense of shared fellowship and community, even in this time of social distance and isolation, that when we came together around gratitude, we found common ground. And we found a, a common space to be together, to remind one another who God is and who we are. Now, now sometimes the, the gratitudes were very simple things, right? The other day I was grateful for a, a popcorn bowl that I have that belonged to my grandmother, to my grandparents' house. They simply reminded me of being with them. So sometimes I think we also think to be grateful, we have to have these great big things to be grateful for. And really it's in the most ordinary places, the simplest moments that we encounter God's presence most profoundly. And so the gratitude challenge was issued and people joined in and uh, it really became a delightful uh, quest every day, not only to, to post gratitude, but to see what other people were, uh, were grateful for. Gratitude has some benefits and uh, a number of them. The first is that gratitude builds resilience. We're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about that. But gratitude also grounds you in being God's beloved. It gives you a place to stand when, when the ground is unsteady. It refreshes perspective, and it connects you with God and with others. And that became particularly important during this season of, of pandemic. We're going to talk a little bit more about what it means that gratitude builds resilience. Many years ago, I was listening to a podcast, and Krista Tippett was interviewing David Steindelrast, uh, who talked about gratitude, and what he said is gratitude is more resilient than the circumstances. Gratitude is more resilient than the circumstances. And to me, that resonates so clearly with give thanks in all circumstances, not for all circumstances. And so as we engaged in this challenge over the last few weeks, what I realized was not only is gratitude more resilient than the circumstances, but I think gratitude builds resilience in individuals and in communities. Gratitude builds resilience in individuals and in communities. Resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And some synonyms of resilience, flexibility, durability, the ability to last, sturdiness, strength of character, adaptability, buoyancy, the ability to bounce back. If there was ever a time in our world where we could benefit from being resilient, it's right now. Gratitude, gratitude is more resilient than the circumstances. Gratitude builds resilience in individuals. You know, our lives were interrupted in, in ways this year too many to count. And every time we, we thought, or maybe just me, every time I, I thought that, that it was, I was on some solid ground, some equal footing, right, with, with a balance of uh, working at home and schooling at home and homing at home, whatever all those things mean, uh, every time I thought that I was on some, some even ground, something else would happen and disrupt that equilibrium. And it was easy enough in some of those moments when things, when things change, when things don't go our way, when, when uh, we encounter difficulties from every angle and we're already sort of beaten down and fatigued, it's easy enough to kind of throw up our hands and, and give up and give in to, to the despair and the heartache and the disappointment. It's easy enough to give in to, to being angry and, and bitter out of that, it's easy to complain about everything when everything seems to be falling apart. The problem with that is that repetitive complaining will attract things for you to complain about, and repeated gratitude will attract things for you to be thankful about. Think about this. If you are a complainer, think about how that takes on a life of its own for you. 
And maybe not you. Think about someone else who's a complainer if you want to and how it takes on a life of its own. Gratitude works in the same way, only the benefit is so much better for us. The impact is so much better for us physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, for us to choose gratitude. Gratitude, expressing gratitude will make you watch for things to be grateful for. And it's amazing the things that you will encounter with gratitude. You know, the people in this gratitude challenge affirmed this. Intentional gratitude changes how we see. It slows us down long enough to truly experience God's presence with us in the present. In all of this season of of pandemic and political turmoil and racial tension, so, so often we get lost in the if onlys of the past or the what ifs of, of the future, that, and we're so focused either behind us or ahead of us that we miss right now. Gratitude slows us down long enough to encounter and experience God's love and care in the present moment that invites us then to be grateful. Gratitude in the circumstances builds resilience for moving through the circumstances. We don't know when or how our circumstances will change. We have just learned very profoundly that they will change. We don't have to be destroyed in that process. Gratitude builds our resilience. But we do have to decide that we're going to participate. Gratitude is not a chore. Gratitude is a choice. I don't know about you, but growing up, I was mostly willing to complain about chores than to choose to do them, right? Sometimes it's easier to protest than it is to actually just do the work. Gratitude isn't a chore. Gratitude is a choice, and a choice of of where we focus our hearts and our minds, of where we focus our attention. Paul writes to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness... Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, If there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Focusing our minds and our hearts on these things keeps us out of the complaining cycle, keeps us out of the despair over our circumstances When when you're focused on these things and focused on expressing gratitude, finding ways, seeing where God is at work and you can be grateful, you don't really have the bandwidth anymore for some of the negativity or some of the complaining or or some of of those other um, things that sow discord and are disagreeable. You, You are able to focus on Christ in your midst, on God's presence in your midst. Gratitude benefits uh us building resilience in individuals and gratitude builds resilience in communities as well throughout the psalms uh, the book in the old testament that are the songs and the prayers of of god's people of israel throughout the psalms gratitude is woven through all the emotions through all the circumstances if you read through the psalms you will find emotions like rage and anger and sadness and pain and sorrow and regret and injustice and unfairness disappointment and grief adversity and fear persecution and loneliness and frustration you'll find all of those emotions and you'll find joy and deliverance and peace and rejoicing and gratitude makes its way through all of them one In six psalms, so uh, one out of six psalms gives pointed instruction to us as people of God, as a community of faith, to give thanks to God, to remember God's goodness, and to give 
thanks, to recognize God's mercy and steadfast love and presence and power and faithfulness through all of the circumstances. That's who God is, present with us. Psalm 107 is one of those psalms. The first verse of Psalm 107, the the title of Psalm 107 in my Bible says, Thanksgiving for deliverance from many troubles. We need that psalm, don't we? Deliverance from many troubles. It starts out with verse 1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. You caught that, right? It doesn't say, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for your circumstances are good. Right? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. This verse is repeated throughout the Psalms as a refrain that the the people of God would hear and know and repeat and understand the invitation to give thanks because God is good. Then throughout Psalm 107, there's four little um, refrains, four little stories about some of the troubles that God's people experienced when they were Uh, lost in in the desert and they wandered around in the desert when they were sitting in darkness, when they were experiencing the consequences of their own sin, when they were overwhelmed by seas and storms. Every time they would say, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them. He saved them. He rescued them. He brought them out from their distress. And then it would say, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. God's people, Israel, this would be one of the songs that they would sing. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. They would recount what their experience has been, what their circumstances have been. They would remember that they cried out to God and God heard them and rescued them, brought them out, saved them from their distress, and they would give thanks for the wonderful works of God throughout the Psalms. We're invited to be a community of faith. It's why we gather in worship in person or online. It's why we gather to remember God's goodness and to remember who we are. We're not alone in all that is happening in the world. And for the church, for our people of God, for the body of Christ, we remember together that gratitude in the circumstances builds resilience for us moving through the circumstances. As a community of faith, gratitude creates common ground for us. It, it sets a common table, and gratitude invites us to sit at the table with joy and sorrow, with relief and pain, with faith and doubt, with answers and questions, with agreements and disagreements that we come to the table together. Gratitude makes room at the table because it's not our table. It's God's table. That's the common table around which we sit and around which we find ways to be grateful. Friends, we need one another. We need one another, especially in these really hard days when our hearts are so tender already and when our bodies and our minds are are tired and weary, when, when we just need to remember God's goodness. And the, the trouble is when, when we, with our words and our actions, tear one another down, when we insist on being right, when we fuel division, it doesn't build resilience for the journey that we're all on. As a body of Christ, we're one body. So when we do things that tear one another down, it does not build resilience for the journey. It just makes it harder as individuals and as the body of Christ. You know, one of the most beautiful things that happened in this gratitude challenge on uh, social media and in other ways, some people did it by email and and writing it down, is that uh, people began to understand that we're connected to one another. There was shared joy. There was shared heartache. There was shared uh, laughter. There was a, a connection when we realized that in our humanity, We all experience very similar things. One of the persons who participated uh, emailed, and he said, you you might not follow me a lot on on Facebook, but sometimes I get into pretty pretty heated arguments on Facebook, and, and the banter sometimes just gets not very nice. And he said, I had people that would engage me in that banter 
When I began posting gratitude, also began posting gratitude. I had people who would engage me in conversation about gratitude before we had conversation about what we didn't agree about. This gratitude challenge of, of expressing it and living into it connects us. People experience deepened relationships. People experienced of the benefit of other people. We, we didn't post gratitude for other people to see, but on Facebook or on social media, it puts joy and goodness out there for others to experience with you. The same way that I was experiencing all the ugliness before, there's an impact beyond what we do for ourselves. People would reach out, not necessarily even on social media, but friends who hadn't talked to each other in a long time would see the gratitude. And one, one of them said, I had friends calling me just to check on me because they saw what I posted on social media. Gratitude creates a common space for us to join together. There are so many benefits to gratitude, building resilience, grounding you and being God's beloved, refreshing your perspective. You know, I was thinking about this week. You know, uh, last Thanksgiving, uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving, as, as you might be dreading Thanksgiving a little bit and having to be with all the people that you only see once a year and you aren't sure you really want to see them and how are you going to tolerate them, and this year we can't see them. Same family, right? Same people. And yet our gratitude shifts when our perspective on life is impacted by our circumstances. Finding ways to be grateful for the sun coming up or for the leaves on a tree or um, for any of the simple things that are moments in our day. Stringing that together in a way that gives life and joy and connection and, and reframes our perspective. So in essence, we, we encounter God as first and foremost before we encounter all that is wrong around us, connecting us with God and with one another. In this time of social isolation, we feel disconnected in a lot of ways from one another. Finding ways to express gratitude and to do that together builds community and connects us. So you know that there's benefits to gratitude. Uh, there's people who are, are my witnesses. I'm not just saying this. There's people who participated in the gratitude challenge who would give witness to this as well. So what can you do especially in these coming days. Well, first, you know I'm going to tell you to breathe and to pray. When your circumstances change, take a deep breath and pray. I'm going to tell you to feel all your feelings and land on the truth. As you go into this week, you may feel elated one minute and despair the next. It's okay. Feel it and land on the truth of who God is and who you are as God's beloved, give thanks in the middle of that, not for what it is, but because God is with you in the middle of that. Read through the Psalms and try to read through with the, the lens of gratitude. Watch where the people of God are instructed to be grateful and how that shifts the tone of the whole Psalm. Memorize Philippians 4, 4 to 9. It's not hard to do. Uh, it will help you. Memorizing any scripture will help you uh, to focus your heart and mind on things that are uh, life-giving and um, grace-filled. Philippians 4, 4 to 9 is a great place to start. And then it's not too late uh, to join the gratitude challenge. I would encourage you just even through the end of the year, through the holidays, whether you do it on social media or simply for yourself, be intentional in practicing gratitude. Three things every day up from that day. And listen, some days are hard. You ask anybody that participated in the gratitude challenge, some days are just hard. A number of years ago when, when my life was really kind of upended and, and gratitude was one of the things that I think saved my life, some days my, my three gratitudes were I got up today, I managed to eat something today, and the day is over, right? That's three. Some days are just hard. Some days things happen that knock us off our feet, God is still with us in that. So thank you, God, that you're with me. Thank you, God, that you're still with me. Thank you, God, that you are still, still with me, right? 
Practice gratitude every day. There's going to be plenty of things over these next few weeks uh, that will be hard, that will be disappointing, that won't be what you want them to be. Plenty of opportunity to jump into the complaining or the despair. I'm inviting you to choose gratitude and joy in those things, not for them, but in them. You know, friends, um, how we live makes a difference. And to speak gratitude, to speak gratitude is courteous and pleasant. To enact gratitude is generous and noble. But to live gratitude is to touch heaven. To understand that God is with us, not someday, but right now. God is with us. And friends, you and I know that until Jesus returns, there are always going to be things that break our hearts that test our patience, that knock us down, that frustrate us, that leave us reeling. Until Jesus returns, there's going to be pain and suffering. There's going to be disease and death. There's going to be brokenness and questions that we cannot answer. And people, all of us people, will continue to make good choices and bad choices with what we say and what we do about how we behave and how we treat one another. But the truth is that for those of us who follow Jesus, we can choose, we can choose whether we allow heaven to be part of right now and how we live gratitude. Gratitude in all circumstances, not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. Why can we do this? Because Jesus in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit And through the body of Christ, the body of Christ in person, the body of Christ around the world, the body of Christ virtually, through the body of Christ, Jesus is with us in and through all of the circumstances. I don't have to tell you guys that the world is longing for good news. Literally, the world is longing for good news. And y'all, we have it. We have it. We have it in God's love, steadfast love and care. We have it in Jesus who lived and died and was raised to new life for us that we might have life. We have it in the presence of the Holy Spirit to sustain us and guide us and lead us and remind us we have good news Will we share it with the world? Are we going to keep it to ourselves? Will we do more than just give thanks this week for that good news? Will we actually live our thanks for that good news? I mean, I, you know, when I, when I thought about giving up social media, I really wasn't sure what would happen with the gratitude challenge, but But even in just these little pockets of time, the people who have participated, their lives have been impacted and the lives of people around them have been impacted by gratitude. So I I have a sneaking suspicion that actually if we would practice gratitude and post gratitude, that it, it could have an impact in a very positive way on the whole of social media. I know that's kind of a huge, a huge dream, right? Like, I'm, but, but we can do it right here. And then the people that are impacted by what we do here can do it where they are. And, and then one, it's one little act of expressing gratitude that may have results further than we can even imagine. So we have good news, and it's about living grateful lives, remembering that God is good even when circumstances are not. And in that, we can give thanks and we can live thanks. Let us pray. Loving and holy God, we are grateful for your presence with us, for your love for us, that it is steadfast and true. We are grateful. We truly are, even even when sometimes our lives don't reflect that. We pray that you would continue to renew our hearts with your steadfast love, that you would remind us that we belong to you and we belong to one another. And that it would remind us that you call us as the body of Christ, as people who follow Jesus, that we are to have an impact on the world in a positive way, showing people your grace and your mercy and your love by how we live, 
And that includes what we say and what we do. So we pray for courage. We pray for compassion. We pray for humility to find ways to give thanks and to live thanks, knowing that you are using gratitude to build resilience in us and in one another and in the world for what is happening now and in for the days ahead. And all of that we do. We do give thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're in the room, I invite you to stand with us as we sing. If you're at home, I invite you to stand and uh, sing with us as we uh, finish up this time of worship together. for you. There are ways that you can stay connected to us. We encourage you to go to the website and find those. There is worship tonight. Worship starts at 630. We invite you to come to Friendsgiving at 5 and bring, if you haven't ordered food, you can bring food and uh, find ways to be safe, socially distant, masked on in community with us. I want to remind you that if you haven't turned in your estimate of giving card for 2021, we're asking you to do that so that we can set the budget to continue ministries uh, next year on our a website, you can go to the Generosity and Giving tab. There's a place for you to fill out your form electronically online. It's very easy. We encourage you, invite you, 
uh, to, to do that. I also want to remind you as we go out into the world, again, from this place or from where you are at home, uh, that we're, we're the body of Christ. We represent Christ when we go out into the world. And so let this word go with you. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Your words verbally, your words on social media, your words in text, however it is that you speak, that your words may give grace to those who hear, so that others might receive from us the goodness of God, the love of God, the peace of Christ. So as you go today... I invite you to go in the love of God and the peace of Christ and the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ be your shalom.